So today, this afternoon, I'll introduce to you a visionary, a spiritualist, a karmoko, a teacher, somebody who has a long serving experience now in Sierra Leone from the regions that he came from, Kabala, Falaba, Kono. These are the most powerful regions in Sierra Leone in terms of bread basket. So tonight, uh, this afternoon, I'll introduce to you a visionary and a political force now in Sierra Leone. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kenfala Mara of Kabala. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Co-Chair. My dear comrades of the All People's Congress Party and fellow Sierra Leoneans, I bring you greetings in the name of God. And I want to say thank you for being here. Good afternoon. You recall that a little over three weeks ago, on the 17th December 2022, I declared my candidature for the 2023 flag bearer of the APC in Mongo headquarter town of Falaba district. For this, I would like to thank the twin district of Kwenadogo and Falaba for their overwhelming turnout and thunderous endorsement of my candidature. As a follow-up to that successful event, I'd like to welcome you all for being here this afternoon to witness the unveiling ceremony of my dreams and aspirations for the transformation of our beloved country, Sierra Leone. I believe with humility that in my wish to lead our beloved country, I owe it to you to share with you my dreams and aspirations on how we will transition from the current challenges confronting us, not only on the economic front, but on many others, such as our collective mindset that has not helped us over the years. It is important also that I share my dreams on how we can create wealth and jobs for the good of all. I also owe it to our development partners, international friends and the business community, civil society, etc., to clearly understand the kind of leadership I'll provide if I'm elected president. As a refresher, I stand on a platform with several years of experience serving in local, national, and international positions. I started my career as a youth leader in Kono, national president of Kono Student Union, and a local government administrator at the then Kwedu New Sembe Hometown Council, Kono District. I bring you more than 20 years of experience in international advisory and public leadership roles, as well as reassuring track record in governance, economic management, policy making and execution. These include serving at the New York State Senate as legislative aid and budget analyst, advisor on public expenditure management at the Commonwealth Secretariat in London, held the following positions in the administration of His Excellency President Dr. Anes Bai Koroma, Sierra Leone's first State Chief of Staff to the President, Minister of Finance and Economic Development, Governor of the Bank of Sierra Leone, and briefly as Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. <laughs> I provided global leadership, among others, as chair of the G7 Plus, which is 
an organization of 20 fragile and post-conflict states that are led by ministers of finance. I co-chair the International Dialogue on Peace Building and State Building, and I also serve on the World Bank Advisory Council on Gender and Development. <laughs> Fellow Sierra Leoneans, I have traveled around the country during the last few years, held conversations with local chiefs, business leaders, farmers, community workers, young people in the talent and entertainment industry as those from Kwenadugu, and many others. I have drawn on the experiences gathered and drawn on my professional journey to put this vision together that I titled A Vision of New Hope for Sierra Leone, A Decisive Choice of Creating Wealth and Jobs. It sets out my vision for transforming our beloved country under the All People's Congress. Let me caution that it is not a silver bullet to solve all the problems here and now. No. Nor is it a manifesto, but it is rather an outline of my vision and provide reasons to consider granting me the task of leading our country and our party especially at the 2023 presidential elections. Let me state from the outset that my vision builds on the legacy of President Dr. Anes Baikuruma and the foundation he laid for private sector-led growth, economic transformation, and infrastructure development. My vision is anchored on peace social cohesion and institutions that President Koroma built upon as created by President Tijan Kaba. It is also an embodiment of my restless thought process on why for 61 years since independence, amid so many opportunities and natural resources, we have not been able to achieve the common goal of fostering economic development. Even though poverty reduction has been our lead approach to national development for the longest period, regardless of our efforts, our country is still facing major development challenges, including the following. More than half of our population have lived below the poverty line since 1961. And regardless of the bony lands and numerous inland valley swamps, of more than 150,000 hectares located in many areas of the country fit for commercial purpose, we've not been able to create or provide sufficient food for our population. And it's really it's challenging. And the truth is that we may not be able to meet the 2030 goal for food self-sufficiency. 58% of our population do not have access to basic water services, whilst only 23% have access to electricity, compared to 30% in sub-Saharan Africa. Life expectancy in our country is below 60 years. Annual outpatient malaria cases are around 2 million per year, and we top the UNICEF 2020 highest infant mortality rate. This is an indictment on all of us. We have battled with perennial public health emergencies over the years, such as meningitis, cholera, Ebola, COVID-19, etc., including natural disasters, as well as a decade-long civil conflict. With more than 90 fishing vessels in our waters, we are yet to secure the EU certification that will allow us to export our fisheries product direct to Europe. And why is that? Because we haven't been able to meet their hygiene standards. Our environmental profiles deserve more, given that we've been unsustainably depleting our forests through massive timber logging. Our beaches are being ravaged by plastics and other wastes, affecting our marine species, and our mangrove areas are constantly being destroyed, among others. Our culture of politics is toxic. 
And though as a religiously tolerant country, I wonder why we cannot replicate those values of tolerance in our politics. We are reminded of Bakaba's popular saying, Salomange bad heart, for which Bakoroma responded, we need attitudinal and behavioral change. It, it really is sad. I wish, therefore, to draw your attention also that we are faced with four dimensional problems associated with young people. And I want you to listen carefully. First, we will most likely lose some of our best brains, is our children, our nieces, our nephews, etc., to the West if we fail to make our country attractive to enable them to return and serve our beloved country in unique ways. And I'm afraid that tomorrow that I will lost me picking them. I was alone. I go pull me that in ten years. I would have lost them. We need to make sure that we work on the country, make it become attractive for letting come and serve. <laughs> Second, there are a large number of go to bike riders. We call them Okada riders. Some put the numbers at 50. Thousand, some say 500,000. Many of these guys will retire from biking before the age 35 because of associated hazards. They lack training, they cannot have access, they do not have access to credit in the banks. This is a time bomb. <laughs> number three, a good number of kids in, in institutions receive education that are not linked to industry. A few years ago, I recall about 2019 or so, we had about 600 young individuals that received BA general degrees. Where are the scientists? Where are the hydraulic engineers? Where are the young Sierra Leoneans that will be able to manage the oil industry when we hit commercial proportions? The institutions aren't anticipative enough to be able to handle that. It's sad. And fourth, we are all witnessing the making of a coach generation. And we are aware that substance abuse is a generation killer. The coach generation, they, they happen every day. We only see them. The question is, why is the critical mass of young people that will take the pattern of leadership So I wish to invite all of us to ask, what does the, which, the future hold if we do not adopt the right measures now to engender a brilliantly succeeding generation? We need to create a generational path for young people. This is why I'm bringing you a message of new hope. We should note also that, despite our country's history of being the first to offer opportunities in the sub-region, with the first institution of higher, uh, the first institution of higher learning, that is the Fawabe College, first Judicial Service Commission, first printing press, and even with Freetown being the first municipality on the African continent, we have lost space over the years. As a result, we've been left behind by our, by our contemporaries who once saw us as the Athens of West Africa. Today, our adversarial politics really puts our national motto in the freedom and justice. It is for this reason that I'm bringing you a message of new hope. Following the following challenges, 
a devastating depreciation of the Leon against other major currencies, with the official exchange rate increasing from 7,623 Leon to the dollar in March 2018 during our administration to over 18,000 Leon to the US dollar in December 2022. The redenomination of the Leon was not well designed and implemented and this has contributed to sharp depreciation of the currency. According to the World Bank and the IMF, Sierra Leone is currently at a high risk of debt distress, having one of the highest indebtedness in Sub-Saharan Africa. No domestic revenue collection and imprudent public financial management has witnessed fiscal de deficit. In addition, the pump price of petroleum products has more than tripled since 2018, due partly to exchange rate depreciation. And the prices of basic goods and services continue to spiral out of control on a daily basis, with little hope that change can happen soon. There is no effective policy in place to address the current economic challenges. That is a fact. Fellow citizens, it is in response to these enduring issues, among several others confronting our country, that I wish to lay bare my leadership experiences and the vision I'm proposing for your consideration. I entreat you to trust my sense of discipline and style of work, my performance record, organizational ability, experiences in managing a challenging economy, the milestone and successes I have achieved in government, and the international leadership I have built over the years to provide the solutions. It starts with my can-do attitude, deep love and passion as demonstrated in my service to our beloved country. Considering the current state of our economy, I believe that someone with a handsome track record of managing an economy in a crisis such as the Ebola should be given chance to steer the affairs of states going forward. In this regard, I wish to remind you of some of the progressive decisions we made and the successes we scored during my tenure in government from 2010 to 2018 in the following capacities. Chief of Staff, we provided collaborative linkages across sectors in the economy that led to the ease of delivery of presidential priority projects and programs. We strengthened service delivery through monitoring of performance contracts across government using the online platform Transparency Sierra Leone and taking regular stock of performance. We led delivery of the MCC for Sierra Leone in 2012. We facilitated the establishment of the Public-Private Partnership Unit and the Social Protection Program. We resuscitated the Civil Service Training College, which was closed down in 1974 to upgrade skills in the civil and public service, and we developed a modern mining lease agreement to guide future mining negotiations. Minister of Finance and Economic Development. We led the introduction of the Treasury Single Account that linked all government accounts for effective management of resources with a further testament that our economy grew at 21.5% in 2013, an all-time high on my watch. And Sierra Leone was recorded among the fastest growing economies in the world. And let me say this, that whilst growth was driven by iron ore export, it was complemented by strong fiscal measures effective monetary and public financial management policies, and a zero borrowing policy we adopted in the first six, six months of my leadership as minister 
As a result, interest rates on Treasury bills and bonds dropped from between 19 and 27 percent to under 5 percent. For this, we recorded massive interest savings of more than 200 billion euros. This action had an impact on the commercial banks and the central banks because they all heavily relied on interest. We back these measures with fiscal rationalization through which we reduce waste in expenditure. For example, we made cuts on our recurrent debts such as overseas travel, put a hold on vehicle purchase and replaced the age old line item and incremental budgeting with activity-based budgeting. It was because of these actions and many more that Sierra Leone scored an all-time high of 52% in 2015 Global Open Budget Survey, which was about the global average and those of our sister countries. <laughs> we also improved domestic resource mobilization in collaboration with the Commissioner of the National Revenue Authority. We introduced a revenue task force that brought together leading revenue generating ministries and agencies and we established the Extractive Revenue Unit as a specialized hub to handle taxes in the extractive stream. Working under the directives of President Koroma and in collaboration with the Bank of Sierra Leone and the Sierra Leone and the National Commission for Privatization, we saved the Sierra Leone Commercial Bank and the Rokel Commercial Bank as part of government strategy to save the country from economic crisis and to improve the financial sector. As a result, both banks are doing extremely well today. We introduced the Skills Development Fund to grow our expert pool and Youth and Women's Empowerment Fund to support growth initiatives of young people and women. In 2014, we announced the highest minimum wage in the history of our country at 480,000 old loans, which was equivalent to $100 then. We increased monthly salaries of teachers, the military, police, fire force, and others at 700,000 loans above 100 US dollars then. We increased allowances of local councils and paid paramount chiefs a handsome salary, include, including the native administration police, who they call any brother. We pay the all salary under President Obama. We made a 15% salary increase across the board through a proper livelihood policy in the midst of the Ebola crisis. We did that. During tough times, when the economy was hit by the Ebola crisis, teachers who sat home without work were promptly paid their monthly salaries for nearly two years. We subsidized tuition fees for 18,000 university students, an initiative which has suffered a reverse today. We introduced the Constituency Development Fund to enable members of parliament to support community development projects. And being a team player and a crisis manager under the leadership of President Koma, and with support from our development partners, we moved the economy from a 21% decline due to the impact of the Ebola crisis and collapse of mineral prices to a positive 6% in 2016. <laughs> the economy experienced an all-time high growth between 2013 and 14 before the Ebola crisis. And that happened during my tenure, but I didn't do it alone. I have uh, my uncle here, older brother, uh, <laughs> A, a, a very serious man, um, Chief Momodo Kabo and few others, we made that possible. And, um, so when Ebola struck, the economy took a dive. And the two mining companies, London Mining and, and, and African Minerals, stopped operations. But in the midst of all of that, we carried on with our work. Whilst the economy had permitted to minus 21, we were able to then roll it again to a positive 6% by 2016. Governor of the Bank of Sierra Leone, I introduced the Young Entrepreneurship Fund at $1 million to grow young Sierra Leoneans into successful businessmen and women. We 
concluded plans for the construction of the northern branch of the Bank of Sierra Leone in Makeni. We resuscitated and relocated the stock exchange for a start, identified government-owned companies to be listed on the exchange. We issued a provisional license for the establishment of a merchant bank to facilitate trade. And we launched a national financial inclusion strategy with a window for fintech solutions. These projects have either been abandoned or have accounted slow progress. Our vision of new hope. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, change comes, transformation happens, and countries do move on through hard work and dedication. Many a time, change comes through dreams. My own dream, my own vision, is anchored on new hope for Sierra Leone. And I believe that here and now, we should take a decisive choice to create wealth and jobs. Our vision of new hope aims to transform Sierra Leone into a leading economy in the sub-region. It is built on a philosophy of strong and demonstrable leadership, leading by example. It is spirited by 10 guiding principles and commitment. And it spells out preconditions and instruments of change. For example, restoring confidence in the private sector, good governance, effective, transparent, and result-driven public and civil service, judicial, police, and human rights reforms, government cooperation with civil society, support to the media, and strong public financial management, as well as revenue enhancement, etc., etc. The 53-page document identifies challenges and opportunities, what worked and what didn't work for over time. It underscores some lessons that patronage in politics and public administration does not deliver the common interests of society. And that inclusive politics, peace and tolerance, are very significant to the next phase of our national development. Drawn from my experience as former chair of the G7+, Plus, the change I envision calls first and foremost for healing the country and putting an end to ethnic and regional imbalances. We need to go beyond smaller challenges and make the right sacrifices to achieve a national character and outlook so as to be able to attract foreign direct investment. We need to do that. My vision endorses ongoing poverty reduction effort, but it boldly calls for a decisive move towards setting the platform for wealth creation and jobs for the good of all Sierra Leoneans. This will be done in league with our ever-willing development partners and international friends. To achieve this, we'll continue with ongoing development programs in health, education, and many other areas, including social safety net. If I'm, pre if I'm elected president in June, we'll take stock of the current economic situation in collaboration with our development partners, the private sector, and other stakeholders, so as to make informed decisions. This may include a change in our domestic and external borrowing, the review of our tax policies, including full automation of our tax system, and the provision of incentives. We have to rethink import duties so as to lubricate investment. We have to adopt prudent monetary policies review recurrent expenditure and proper spending, adopt innovative and development financing, as well as many other strategies as a means to fixing the ongoing economic challenges. It will take time, but it can be fixed, and trust me, we can fix it. My vision calls for private sector-led growth. Our vision of me will put the private sector in the driver's seat. Be as pragmatic as to attract foreign direct investment, create opportunities for small and medium-sized enterprises, and grow a new generation of businessmen and women, among others. Truth is, government cannot create all the jobs. The private sector does. The main role for government is to create the enabling environment. That is what we're going to create. We will set up a high-level national economic council to provide critical analysis of data 
and to monitor the implementation of our national development plan. Membership will be drawn from in-country and external experts. Now we have a plan. We think it is brilliant. We want to implement it. Good luck. Thank you. But it shouldn't remain that level. We need a national economic council to be able to take stock of the progress we are making, to draw attention as to whether we are making the right decisions or not. If we are veering the other way, it will be the responsibility to draw attention that this isn't what is set out to do. We need to do that. And it will be one of the things that we'll do. The work will be complemented by a business investment council, which I will co chair with the private sector as president. This committee will review the doing business environment on a monthly basis, provide investment advice, and serve as a clearinghouse for investment aftercare and handling bottlenecks. It will also anchor the core business of creating wealth and jobs. Positioning the diaspora in the economy. The diaspora has been one of the biggest and consistent contributors to the economy, especially during periods of crisis, such as the civil conflict, the Ebola, etc. We will therefore position the diaspora in the economy and create a new department of diaspora affairs in finance or finance in finance or foreign ministry. Much was done by President Koma, but there is room for improvement. For example, enhance ease of doing business for the diaspora through the Diaspora Investment Initiative that will enable the issuance of the diaspora bond, facilitate access to land, professional volunteering of diaspora in respective areas such as in health. One of my first engagements with the diaspora is to get them and their children to invest in affordable housing, which will be implemented through the special purpose vehicle that will set up in collaboration with the private sector. Let me go. We position the diaspora in the economy. And one of the first projects is to get them to invest in affordable housing. It could be for the police, it could be for nurses, for teachers, and so on. We get them not only to invest in that vehicle, but to invest on behalf of their children, to be able to tie the spirit of their children to our country. <clears throat> As a first step, we'll shortly host a Zoom meeting with the diaspora to explore further opportunities and ideas beyond my humble plans. We will introduce economic trade and investment foreign policy. Through these initiatives, ambassadors and high commissioners in leading cities in the world will sign annual performance contract with my office, spelling out the number of investment they will funnel into the economy. This contract will be fully monitored by citizens. The diaspora community will form part of the investment committee that will be set up in the respective cities to assist our diplomatic missions. Let me make this clear. Our foreign policy will shift from normal day foreign policy arrangement. What will require our ambassadors and high commissioners in major cities is to get them to bring on board in this country FDI's foreign direct investment. For example, if you're High Commissioner to London, congratulations. But if you sign a contract with me to be able to bring on board 10 companies per year, FDIs, and it is October, you've only brought in four, I think you'll be preparing to, to pack. <laughs> that has to change. So think if you have four or five major embassies around the world, and our responsibility, the key responsibility, is to bring into this country investors. Trust me, our economy will begin to grow. That is how we create jobs. That is how we create wealth. <laughs> the green, the white, and the blue economies. It's deliberate. Why I decided to, to, to couch it that way? Because at the end of the day, we'll have three categories. We'll have these three broad areas to be able to take the economy forward. So we have those working in the, in the green cluster, in the white clusters, as well as in the blue cluster. And I will explain to you what exactly I'm, I'm, I'm driving at. The green economy, the green team, 
that is, the institutions will focus on natural resources and food production within the country. It will cover diversification, mechanize large-scale agriculture, including livestock, a better environmental profile, including clean energy, that covers solar, carbon credits, etc., forestry, and other elements to processing. So under the green economy, we adopt a special regime for agriculture. This will include immediate adoption of land and water right policy to protect individuals and businesses for commercial agriculture, which will lead to food self-sufficiency and export. It's a special regime for agriculture. To back this, we transform the default National Development Bank into a bank of agriculture and industry to support large-scale and commercial agriculture and industry. We have to do that. Commercial banks will not, will not run out $100 million. But if you have a bank of agriculture and industry, which will set up in collaboration with development partners and other interest players, then it will go a long way to boost and support large scale as well as commercial agriculture. We will build on our livestock potential, such as in Musara, Falabar district, for dairy products and beef export in collaboration with development partners, NGOs, and the private sector. You go up to the north, not only in Kwenadugo or Falabar district, we have many ranches, right? But we are unable to export beef. Why? We're going to do that. But you can only do so if you bring in the right mind, the right resources, and the right institution. Botswana is doing it. It's no magic. We should be able to do it. The potential is there. We have to drill down and ensure that we deliver. We will, <coughs> we will increase cash, cash crop production through the introduction of incentives and regenerate the 1970s rubber plantations in Boturu, Levuma in Pujam district, Simbaru, Bojibu, and Tonkia in Kenema district. Really? We have these rubber plantations set up in the 1970s that they are dying, not turning in anything. No. We get there, regenerate it, create more so as to be able to create wealth for our people and create jobs. <laughs> if the soil is good for it, it will be our responsibility to ensure that we build on it. Why did those plantations die? Really? It's children. So that could be a contract for a Minister of Agriculture. We will also declare we we'll also declare popularly known bully lands such as Tomabon, Bundapi, Rolako, and Kumabai Mamila for commercial and large scale farming with the relevant incentives and to be able to attract investors. So we'll have all, all of these areas, we'll have to survey them, we'll do soil studies, and we'll have a booklet regarding each of these. So if you come in as an investor, one stop shop, you know the soil profile, you know what to do, and you know the cost of investment. You have a three-year uh, um, 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 incentive to be able to bring in your machinery. But whatever you do should be linked with education and training. Trust me, if we are able to do this, we'll be, we'll be self-sufficient in food production and we'll be able to export. We have to be deliberate and we have to be strategic. We will rehabilitate the eight irrigation site for rice production in Makali, Mange, Rosa, etc., in collaboration with the private sector. We have eight major irrigation sites for rice. One of them is in Makali. Recently, I visited Makali. The training school is closed down, the generators are there, everything is lying fallow, nothing is happening. By so bringing the private sector the right incentives and get them to, to start. The reality is, you have seven or eight of those areas in the country. But if you focus on it and you put in place the right machinery and incentives, you'll be able to attract private sector investment. And I say this every day. Subsistence farming will not solve the problem. If you keep throwing a ball through a particular hole 50 or 60 times and it doesn't go through, stop. And assess your position and ask the question. Is, your, is the hole too small or your ball too big? Do you need to deflate your ball a bit? When I was chair of the G7 Plus, an association of a fragile state of 20 ministers of finance, I had the opportunity to sit with world leaders 
and I had the opportunity to sit with Jim Kim, who was president of the World Bank, and I asked Jim, you've been helping us in agriculture for about 50 or so years. It's been subsistence farming, and we're still poor, yield per hectare is low, but we keep doing the same thing. Can we not stop and do something? He turned around and says, well, we are supporting your policies. But then I said, sometimes your policies have been prescribed. So he says, but if you put something in place that is really good, and you, and you believe you can work on it, then why not? We'll have to support it. So I believe, in my view, that agriculture presents us a phenomenal opportunity, but I think we we'll have to take it and do it differently with a private sector strategy in mind, get the right players and make a commitment and ensure that you deliver on them. We will introduce a one dollar one tree initiative as an incentive to increase cash crop production and create a group of cash crop growers to boost production, processing and marketing. Why a one dollar one tree? So you put $30 million aside, you access it. And if a Sierra Leonean plant a cash crop, it could be cashew, it could be oil palm, it could be anything that is cash crop, and it survives one dry season, you pay them, you give them a dollar for that, a dollar a tree. Non-taxed. The reality is, within three or four years, you'll have 30 million cash crop trees in the economy. You know what will happen? The derivative economy will kick in. And then you create a council of cash crop growers. Today, if we are able to bring around the table all cash nut growers, say 10 or 15 of them, and we try to understand the acreage each of them have worked upon, the cumulative volume of, of production within the next three, four years, trust me, we'll begin to think of establishing a processing plan. The derivative economy will kick in. That is how we create wealth. That is how we create jobs. It's a real you have you, you have Sokfi in Samalem, right? A brilliant initiative of President Koma. Today, their production capacity is 60,000 metric tons. They export 30,000, the 30,000 remains. For the 30,000, what happens? They, they produce paddy oil, they produce butter, they produce other things. And it's working, including so. The 30,000 they export goes out as no, they, 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 they export it to Liberia, to Nigeria, and others. Now ask yourself, if you have five, six softening companies in the economy, what a mighty growth possibilities will have been able to create. So in my view, this is how we're going to go about it. We will adopt a special regime for in-country fertilizer production or a dedicated source of supply. These are some of the ways we create wealth and jobs for our people. The white economy. The white economy will focus on supporting the talent industry and standardizing service industry. It will be driven by the power of ideas and innovation to accelerate economic growth. The white economy will create opportunities for indigenous businesses, young people, women, etc. It will focus on such specific areas as the talent and entertainment industry, as well as service industries. It covers tourism, ICT, etc. will facilitate the establishment of a merchant bank to, to enhance trade and revamp the stock exchange, engineering, medicine, and the maintenance industry. Why the talent and entertainment industry? You know, not everyone, not everyone will go to uni and graduate with a BSc finance or accounting. We've neglected the talent industry. The opportunities are there, but it is our responsibility to work with the private sector to help them. We have fashion designers, right? Do we have scientists in the economy? Do we have swimmers? If we are able to create opportunities for young people who may have a natural talent, and if we are able to help them, trust me, if we have three or four competitors, for example, at the Commonwealth Games, and we have gold medalists you know, in swimming or cycling, the returns 
will experience as a country will be far better than 25 PhD holders. That is the truth. And recently, I had a conversation with the team in Kabbalah, these guys that just performed here. And, and the outcomes and recommendations were great. What we'll do soon is to be able to hold a roundtable with people in the talent and entertainment industry to look at the challenges and hear them out and put together their recommendations. If we're able to take those recommendations, trust me, it wouldn't just be formal education. I think we'll be able to, to, to create opportunities. It could be on cycling, it could be on, on basketball, it could be anything, it could be music, it could be uh, rebranding, you name them. That is what moves an economy. We will conduct seven credit rating to put the country on the trajectory of accessing capital investment finance, seek non-traditional financing to support capital project, revamp the financial sector, and facilitate fintech solutions. These are some of the ways we can create jobs and wealth. The blue economy. We have this abundant and diverse fisheries resources with the potential to contribute more than 10% of GDP and will continually serve as a major source of animal protein for at least 80% of our people and employ approximately 1 million people. So we should be able to turn that sector around. We need to train to create fisheries experts, marine, you know, marine biologists, and many things. We need major companies to be able to package our fisheries product. What happens is we have these vessels in our, in our seas, they come in fish, and we sell to third countries. They process them in China, they process them in Senegal, and ferry them off to Europe for any price. We have to change that strategy. We cannot have 90 fishing vessels in our seas and not necessarily serving the purpose of the economy. We have to think big. We have to be decisive. We have to create those, those companies to be able to process, to package, and export directly from Sierra Leone. That is what we're going to do. It's no magic. Others are doing it. We should be able to do it. Building the foundation of growth. We build on President Kuruma's legacy by revisiting the 1,000 megawatt power Sierra Leone within the context of clean energy as an engine of growth. We revisit the Bumbuna 2 project, continue President Kuruma's legacy of road construction, expand the free time port to fac facility to become a transshipment hub, enhance manufacturing and industry, introduce free trade zones in the regions of the country, including district investment and transformation initiatives, and build a service-driven economy. We will transform our mining sector. My leadership will, among others, take steps to align my vision with key international standards and guidance, such as the UN SDGs 2030. We will develop an exploration and mining investment promotion plan. We will improve regulatory oversight, collaborate with the Bank of Sierra Leone and private sector, to create gold trading hubs across the country in the short term with the aim of establishing gold refinery in the medium to long term and adopt and implement value addition strategy through beneficiation. We need to set up gold, gold trading hubs across the country and later go down the path of doing gold refinery. That is how we we'll create impact in the economy. We can't just be ferrying and shipping our gold out through Guinea and other areas. It hasn't helped us. We have to be strategic about it. We will adopt a transformation regime in tourism that will make Sierra Leone a competitive destination for tourism and investment within the sub-region. For example, we conduct a nationwide survey of all relics and monuments to facilitate public-private partnership in order to increase the frequency and number of tourists. So we have these sites all over the country. Some, some are almost dead. So you do a survey and bring on board private sector to be able to manage them. That is how you create wealth. That is how you create jobs. We adopt home-grown initiatives supported by incentives 
to attract investment in the tourism sector. Partnerships. The vision carves out a role for all Sierra Leoneans as partners in development, supported by Paramount Chiefs with the private sector and technology placed in the driving seat of sustainable economic growth, and the military playing technical and logistic support services in agriculture and infrastructure. I made mention of Paramount Chiefs. The role of Chiefs will be very, very critical and central. We'll have the Paramount Chiefs to develop database of primary schools in their chiefdoms, the pass rate, number of, 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 of peripheral health units, experts in their chiefdoms, to be able to work with local councils and government so as to be able to develop those localities. It can be business as usual. We have a good number of Paramount Chiefs today that are literate. And if we are able to work with them to ensure that they work with local councils as well as government, it will go a long way in changing things you know, in, 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 in chiefdom. <laughs> i give you an example. When I was Chief of Staff, I learned that we had about 1,270 plus peripheral health units across the country. We had nurses deployed in all of those communities. So what happens, they go there, after two months, they head back to Freetown, why? No electricity, no mobile coverage, no nothing. They come back. But if you work with Paramount Chiefs, and they have their development strategy working directly with government, what happens, it will be their responsibility to ensure that they train lo locals to be able to provide those services that others may not necessarily provide for them. We have to be innovative in that regard. <laughs> People-centered initiatives. Our vision of New Hope is people-oriented. So in the document, we decided to look at various sections of society to see what specific actions or activities that we could implement to be able to help those sections of society. And I'll speak to them. Health and sanitation. We'll be on President Koma's initiatives in the health sector to a good number of specialists through the Skills Development Fund. You know, when I was Minister of Finance, Pakago is here, we, we established the Skills Development Fund with the intent of training experts in the economy. We had introduced the Free Healthcare Initiative, and we are all aware of that. But I asked you a question. Do we have dentists in all the, in all the districts? Do we have a gynecologist, orthopedics? You name them. Government should, in a way, directly intervene through the Skills Development Fund to ensure that a pool of experts are developed within the economy to be able to serve the many areas of interest. If we fail to do that, we will not be able to move forward. We we'll transform capacity for diagnosis and treatment as well as improve referral facilities. We we'll build on health insurance scheme introduced by our administration, improve accident and emergency services, enhance infrastructure, equipment, and disaster management strategies. Education. Literacy revolution for creativity and critical thinking. We review performance in the sector, but go further to take a long-term view of education. We adapt education to the changing realities of technology and innovation, and link young talent with industry through the Skills Development Fund. We train our educational institutions with counterparts in developed countries, and list recently retired teachers in those countries to teach English and science in primary and secondary schools, rehabilitate and, and recalibrate teacher training institutions, revisit the public service academy project, and transform the civil service college. We explore the possibility of establishing university towns and educational hubs. The young shall go. That is how I see it. Our young people must grow. How? We we'll develop young people and entrepreneurial capacities through the Skills Development Fund to train expert pool in the economy. We we'll resuscitate the Young Entrepreneurship Fund. When I was governor of the Central Bank, we established the Young Entrepreneurship Fund. 
we decided to set aside a million dollars for a start. Why? You have young people from uni. They may be IT experts. They have ideas to do business, to create apps, but they are not bankable and do not have access to credit in commercial banks. You have to have this fund to be able to create opportunity for these young people. What happens after a few years is you'll have been able to create businessmen and women within the economy. It shouldn't just be about white collar jobs. You have to create opportunities for young people to realize their, their, their potentials. That was why we established the Young Entrepreneurship Fund. I'm not sure what is happening to it, but I strongly believe it is what I will do if I'm president. As I said, we boost the talent and entertainment industry, and shortly I've spoken to people in that industry who will host a round table to be able to have a fuller conversation as to how to take the talent and entertainment industry seriously, how to position it, and it to ensure that a good number of young people in that industry are able to realize their potential. Government cannot do it alone. You have the private sector and other interest institutions that may join you to ensure that it, it does, it, it performs well. We resuscitate the National Youth Village, an initiative of former President Koma, to bring the talent of young people, especially in wealth creation in areas of agriculture, value addition, and marketing. Women for Better initiative. create opportunities for women's empowerment and economic participation by establishing a dedicated national woman bank and appreciably increase women's participation in governance and the economy more than ever before who we'll resuscitate the women's empowerment fund now i, I want to talk about the national the national bank if, if i'm president why i would do it you know in, in in Kwanadugu and Falaba and many of these communities and in other areas in Mwamba, I have this project. You put aside 10, 15, 20 million for a number of women, they will appoint their chair and they set the interest rate. And we are now know today that interest rate, microfinance interest rates are killing. They are far above 15%. But these women will set the interest. Some will agree for three, others will say 5%. And they work around it because the interest rate is low. It, it works for them. So after six or eight months of a year, the interest that will, have, that, 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 that will have accrued or accumulated to a very large extent will go back to the women. And it has helped them a lot. We have this project in many towns and in many chiefdoms across the country. If our president will establish a national woman bank with preferential interest rate around 5%, so that default rate will be low and women will be able to realize their potential. <laughs> Leave no girl behind. We we'll declare a flagship beginning with the STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics program as a pilot aimed at growing young professionals such as doctors, engineers, science, scientists across the board. This is a project that will roll out STEM project, leave no girl behind. We will pilot it in one of the districts to ensure that our girls do well. A gender policy assessment portal. We introduce this to be able to help women to assess government performance in areas of commitment such as access to justice, credit, land, effectiveness of family support units across the country, and gender-related violence, and how gender-related violence is, is being addressed. Every government will make a commitment on gender to help women. And I agree. And we all do that. But the question is, how would you know that it really is working? So this portal will help. It's an online tool you have select number of women drawn from districts to be able to assess government performance. If government says women should have access to credit, they will assess government performance on that. Access to land. 
access to justice. And they will be able to, to demonstrate or tell their stories to the rest of the country as to whether these family support units across the country are working. The outcome of that assessment will be discussed in my cabinet, in parliament, and action will have to be taken. We will work for persons with disability and other vulnerable groups and protect our domestic workers abroad. We have domestic workers abroad, right? Who said in the day, Turkey, where they really complain every day? Not to so. We're going to do something about that. We we'll adopt a holistic labor and pension reforms for our senior citizens. They've been forgotten. We have to take a look at that, review it, and do something about it. We will engage slum communities to work on the transformation of the slum in collaboration with relevant stakeholders such as city council. Restructured governance. We we'll have to take another look at our governance environment. The success of this vision is predicated on a restructured governance system. We we'll pursue a policy of government effectiveness by trimming down the number of ministries, departments, and agencies and matching some of them. There will be an independent mechanism for the appointment of the anti-corruption commissioner and appointment by the president shall only be ceremonial. A serious business, right? We have to do that. Promote and deepen decentralization. We we'll empower local councils to near financial independence through enhancing capacity on tax mobilization, planning and execution and allow city and district councils to manage city and town planning as well as rate collection. In short, in short, we'll get local councils to do what they were created for. We will introduce a governance transition protocol in the national constitution to facilitate the smooth transfer of power from one, from one administration to the other as a peace building mechanism. We have to do that. And I can give you two examples. And I limit it to one because of time. President Kuna's brilliant idea of free health care was there. We made tremendous progress. I have a clear view as to where we were. We are now trying to ensure that drugs are delivered effectively that referral um, 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 facilities are created. We are working on that. And then came a change of government, and now free education, or good quality education. Now, that is facing teaching problems, and the free healthcare hasn't realized its full potential. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like you're pedaling a bicycle and not driving a car. So you go one way, and then the other slowly, you make progress relative to yourself. It doesn't make sense. We need to create this protocol so that when government changes, you sit around the table, you know exactly where health was, where agriculture was, and we take a look at all of them to be able to make informed decisions moving forward. Because the money you're spending isn't your money, it's other people's money. <laughs> we, we reform <coughs> the law enforcement agencies and democratic institutions. We support specialized watchdogs to issue reports on the performance of the judiciary and the police. You know, civil society and the others focus on government, but we need to have specialized watchdogs to focus on the judiciary as well as the police to be able to report. We intensify the war on corruption and strengthen public financial management through the introduction of e-procurement platform. E-procurement platform is really, really good whilst working with the Commonwealth Secretary to provide one for Botswana, which limits corruption in the system. But you can only do so if your digital economy arrangement is good. And that is why we we'll have to put at the fore digital economy to be able to manage many of these initiatives. We will also instill discipline in the civil and public service, strengthen regulatory agencies, we we'll state own enterprises of the budget and get them to pay dividend to the Treasury. When I was Minister of Finance, along with Pakoma, we, we commissioned a study on our 17 state-owned enterprises. And the word was out, either you swim or you sink. Give us your true life strategy to be able to move on. What happens is a good number of these state-owned enterprises continue to feed on the budget. 
instead of paying dividend to the Treasury. So we need to ensure that a strategy is created such that these state-owned enterprises will, will work well and will be able to stand on their own as well as pay dividend to the Treasury. Seratel is one. It's not performing. So think about it. You have all of these agencies feeding on the budget, and their key and, 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 and primary responsibility is to contribute to the budget, to the, to, to the Treasury, rather. So we have to be able to do that. And I still have that report. Um, it, it, it was sponsored by DFI, DFI did it. I think we'll have to take that forward. Social reform agenda. My social reform agenda is to influence behavior and mindset, and I'll tell you how it's going to work. Improve hygiene and sanitation to become an environmentally advanced society. For example, we scale back the incidence of diarrhea and malaria. Annual malaria cases, are, our patient cases are recorded to be 2.2 million, and typhoid on an annual basis. Now, if you are Minister of Health or Minister of State responsible for sanitation, you can assign a performance contract with me. Malaria cases must go down as well as, the, as, well as um, typhoid. Why? Because typhoid has to do with our bad sanitation system and hygiene. It isn't helping. I wonder if there is anyone in this room who hasn't suffered typhoid malaria of, of recent. And whatever it takes to do that, should be addressed. I will roll out toilet for all Sierra Leonean programs. That is why power matches are central and key. We roll out toilet for all Sierra Leoneans. Commit every citizen to plant a tree each year for a period of five years to enhance Sierra Leone's climate profile. We have to do that to reclaim our country again. <laughs> Instructing environmental policies and regulations to reduce air and noise pollution, protect wetlands, improve water quality and waste management, and introduce a paperback policy. Yeah, a paperback policy will be introduced. So all the plastics here will begin, will, will begin loss. You know, good for we. Adopt city and town planning codes and keep our cities clean. Adopt stronger policies and regulations to improve town and city planning and management. We ban the use of drugs on educational facilities such as schools and implement stronger anti-drug laws and reduce the number of road accidents year on year through a dedicated performance tracking tool. Accident per year is more than 2,000 in our economy. Unacceptable. So how you would one? You're responsible for Road Safety Authority. Congratulations. Last year's accident rates now 2,600 and so on. Not to so. 2023 rates you get for good up. How do you do that? You know they travel plenty. You get for work with your car union. You get for work with drivers. Road signage get for improved. Construction get for improved. People will get for land. They even get for introduced penalties for people who just get careless accidents. When you have more vehicles in London and in Paris and other cities, but a lesser number of accidents. And one of the key ones I every year. He said, Hello, this is my brother, I drive down, and I help you for driving license in yeah. Two weeks later, I go back and say, I got, nah, nah, got my car, not to God. I left for life and God. <laughs> so, this is how it's going to happen. If you are responsible for road safety authority, we have to ensure that road accident per year continues to drop. And everything I'm saying will be tracked online. When I was chief of staff, we rolled out transparency, Sierra Leone, supported by the, 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 the Commonwealth. There are 862 projects that we are able to track. This time around, we're going to do the same. So performance contracts will be out there. You could sit at your attire base and take a look at how many companies, for example, the ambassador in, 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 in Frankfurt you know, has, has been able to, to, to provide here in the economy, number of road accidents, whether they are meeting their targets across the board. Nobody knows they hide anymore. It has to be public. Enhance service delivery by committing institutions and enforcing turnaround times through their performance contract. For example, they should declare the, the number of days it will take for citizens to access national ID cards, passport driving license, vehicles, motorbike license, ETSA and GOMA meters, etc. 
we put technology and IT at the fore of transformation as an enabler. What do I mean here? Turnaround time will be enforced. So immigration and institutions responsible for, for driving license, vehicle, motorbike license, should be able to let the public know how many days it will take for citizens to wait for their cars. Clear. If we fail to do that, we will not move forward. We have to be serious about this. You sit back and take a look at Rwanda and you say, yeah, they are doing well. Are you doing what they have been doing? You have to change the way you've been doing things. So those institutions have to be clear and let us know that turnaround times. So if I see them, Nana Kabbalah, apply for, for passport, I for able to say, after seven days, I will get her. And you need after seven days, you get her. And performance will be tracked. If you don't need that, they go with the other person can do it. We roll out water for all the elements initiative with a clear target date for its achievement and embark on new ideas to realize our natural potential. You know, when they come with a flood, and they are in the mail, it go up and down, everybody they confused, not so. I guess some councillor and I go do up call me so the clean one can do up the, the roof. The place on flood. In October, by December, we take five gallons to look for water. Something wrong. <laughs> so first step is bring all civilian water engineers round the table, including their experts and the private sector. Let's sit round the table and ask the right questions. What are the sources? What strategies will we adopt? How long will it take for us to be able to access clean drinking water as a country? That is where development begins. That is how we roll back typhoid. That, that, that is how we'll be able to address waterborne diseases. If we fail to do that, we'll not be able to break even. So it will be the third Zoom meeting that I will host shortly with Sierra Leone water engineers to look at the possibilities and what to do, including setting, setting a timeline. That has to happen. It may not happen right now, but trust me, it will happen as long as we've been able to dedicate ourselves or commit ourselves to, to the strategy, it can happen. I don't know how long I want to conclude. I wish to conclude by first and foremost calling on senior comrades and all to consider giving me the opportunity to take the party into the next elections in June 2022. I have served, <coughs> I have served this party diligently since I joined the government of President Koma. Yes. I have managed the affairs of the party as acting chairman in Kwanadugu. Yes, yes, I have chosen. I have proven that beyond doubt that I can win elections despite many physical attacks. So most of the by election they sit under attack Dr. Mara and I am born in Motoka, they were allowed to win the elections. And I've championed the construction of one of the finest party offices in Kabbalah. Yeah. And another in Tarama. Yeah. And for the first time, I will speak about the Tarama office public. You know them, Bonamé, 2018? You know them, Bonamé, 2018? Yes. No, sir? Yes. OK. When I ever hear him in a radio, no. I complain. No. I say anything. No. I go to him and meet with the same party people, the same people that we talk. I not ever mention. I want to know why. Those are the sacrifices I made mention of. <laughs> Tick for tax, not to help this country. You mean a very senior party person will tell young people and say, "I go born a male." You just understand that. We don't reach a point where we're going to put that aside. We don't reach a point to say we're going to let go.
So I talk about our force today. And we'll do this report no day. Because I already want to move forward. You look at certain things and say, let's just move on. <laughs> if given the opportunity to lead, I'll build on the legacy of my predecessors, look after the interests of the veterans, the disabled, when the women and men, the task force, ASME, the affiliate group, and all organs. I will therefore do that. I wish to note a word of caution to all comrades that time is not on our side, and it is incumbent on all of us to work together towards the common good of our party. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier in one of my public correspondences, any move to score a political point that may be injurious to the bigger picture will render failure on the part of the perpetrator as well. You know, who say don't know to get for the waiting right? If you say they manipulate you, they do the wrong thing. At the end of the day, they can't hunt you back. They can not the whole party. So whatever will they do, let them in the interest of the party. Let me call on all Sierra Leoneans those of us serving with private, local, and international institutions at home and abroad, and those of us who complain every day about poor salon to rise up to the occasion and be part of the change being proposed here. Let us roll up our slaves to water the seeds of nation building because the hope of change is anchored on us all. My vision is not a silver bullet that provides all the solutions here and now. Development takes time to yield great result, especially after such a long lap. Let me caution all again that my vision is not a national development plan either that is backed by a result framework and program cost. The development plan not get program cost, it not get a framework. Now ideas are put down on paper for make Sierra Leone and Slucan. It doesn't promise perfection it paves the way only to progressive change, and it brings to you a framework that allows for your input and participation in delivering the expected result. Together, we can be the change makers for our generation. In this regard, I encourage every Sierra Leonean to visit our website and social media platforms, our new hope, sl.com, to make your comments and contributions. My vision document is not a conclusive work. It is open to ideas. I will be meeting with the diaspora to say, how will we position you in the economy? We will create a special purpose vehicle for you to invest in housing. Are there other ideas? How will we take them forward? We will meet with young people in the talent and entertainment industry. What will we do about your movie industry? What about what about singing and music? What about drama? Well, what will we do to ensure that we have cyclists, that Sierra Leoneans will be able to play rugby if possible, or to be able to participate, to have basketball, and many other things in the economy? So you have that conversation, because it's another way of creating opportunity frontiers for young people in the economy. And third, water engineers, able need water, you are the engineers all over the world. You are experts. You work in all of these institutions and these great countries. Let's sit around the table and solve salon water problem. We have to do that. So fellow Sierra Leoneans and comrades of the APC, we believed in our country once, and so did the world. Let us therefore work together to make the world believe in Sierra Leone once again and to pass on a legacy to the next generation so that the next generation can be proud of it. I envision a proud country, one that will rise from the shadows of fragility to soar in economic leadership in the sub-region through the concerted effort of its people with innovation and newer ideas for creativi creativity and sustainability. I wish to draw your attention, fellow citizens, to two complementary realities about change. First, if we do as we always did, we will get as we always got. In other words, repeated actions will not give us different results. That's the fact. 
You know, we did on subsistence agriculture all these years. 61 years, you know, we feed yourself. And you continue to do the same? Really? No. So if you continue to do the same, you're not going to expect different results. That is why, in a very bold way, and they say yes, we don't do a poverty reduction for all these years. 1961 poverty levels with a population just around 2 to 3 million below 60, above 60%. So they are the same with a population of around 8 million. Can you not stop and do something else? That is what I am proposing. And I say so because I don't work now many of the institutions where they are at the center. And many of the policies I share with you, a good number of them know they work right now. They know they function at all. You take the stock exchange. If you then our small room in our bank of Sierra Leone, move and carry on check at Stephen Street, we list three government companies. We all do well. We even do solving credit rating so that when the result come on like other banks, we will, be, we will be attractive so that private sector will get, uh, we will access private sector finance. But no, it never happen. Big branch of Bank of Sierra Leone and McKinney just as it is at Kenema because they're not a big, you need that. No, it won't stop. Put money, a million dollars for young people so that they will get access to credit for good business. When you continue that way, by then time, for going to be seven, eight, nine, ten million. That is how you grow your economy. So if we don't get on poverty reduction all these years, we we'll still continue for poor. The sick continue. Malaria is 16 something. I mean, they say the white man's grave today. Don't get in small brother than call and typhoid. They will therefore stop and begin for do the right things. And I say, look at Father Marana in eyes and say, if he say that they do this, if you know the do one. If you set your mind to write, suppose for one. And the people will do so, please. So we continue to do these things the same way in order to give you any different result. If you cook cocoa, now cocoa bear they give you. And how he mix that cassada, now for free they give, you know, we give other things. So we have to change. At that I mean. And second, that change is inevitable. Whether we go to change or not, change will come to us. It will happen. But we have the option to choose the change that we want. Not a poorly designed change. We must therefore be our own change makers. Whether we agree or not, change they happen. But we get the option for choose the change where we want. If we sit down and continue the same way, they will not complain at all. So therefore, I'm saying we have to be our own change makers. That is why I'm inviting you to join me to make this change. It's a picture. <laughs> In addition, Inclusion and tolerance must be integral to nation building because as the saying goes, an open oven doesn't bake bread. We must heal our country now, be politically accommodating as we are known for our religious tolerance. Ebo, and Christmas on Paso. I doubt if any Muslim or anybody they will not celebrate Christmas. Not so? Not so? We pray they come. I get some Christian friends who they 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 they, 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 they observe Ramadan. Not so. If you go to some Kuru Bara, you know they say. So if we're so religiously tolerant, why not we do so in we politics? Why would therefore make our tough and difficult? It will make no sense. Eight million people in a small place like this with taller opportunities, brilliant opportunities. Can we not just tap into those opportunities? And accommodate one one another and ensure that to do what to for do. And the change this I promise and I hope this I bring. <laughs> Hate politics and regional division will not take us anywhere. Such will only continue to limit our growth prospect. It is time to let go 
It is time to embrace one another and it is time to heal our country so that together we can be a better, a greater, and a prosperous Australia. We need that. It is also time to believe in ourselves. And I will say this for skeptics. In a long conversation, as I say, I went around the country meeting people. Sidona at our base, many at our bases. I visit our more than 60 at our base in Freetown. It engaged them. Say, Dr. Mara, we didn't make you president. Now, for Sidona, left for three days. Hey, for friends? For friends? No. The reality is, when we do that, the very serious investor in the Kanai country. Sometimes you water the tongues for the sake of the rose. Forget that rose is flower, right? You get to chuk pana. But why the water around every day? You the water around because of the roses. Not because of the chuk chuk. But you get for water around because you need them. They smell good. If you know you accommodate yourself, and it's been like that since independence. If you take a look at the Sierra Leone Independence Report, we parliament discussed, the UK Parliament discussed Sierra Leone Independence before they grant to independence. It ain't the answer. It's not too good. A good member of the NPC says Sierra Leone is ready for, for independence. That would be fight among ourselves. That hit politics so deep. Has that changed? I remind you of the history. Why would King Jimmy burn a whole settlement because of Nopian? Why would Bravo Sharp and the others buy the province of freedom? How is it called? Yes, the province of freedom. This whole area of freedom from, to, from one king, they concluded that another king came up and says, let me get this land, then buy it again. Now, so land in Africa every day, they buy every day, two, two, ten. It has never changed. Need I remind you of Governor Clarkson's prayers? You don't need any, any history of any former British colony that a Governor General pronounced a curse, he swear people. It don't happen here. You take a look at the outcome of the 1958 riot. When they set up the Commission of Inquiry to look at the reasons behind that riot and make recommendations, that was in 1958. Several years later, decades later, after the civil conflict, we set up the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. You know what came out of that report? The same. Can we not change? Really? Is that how we move our country forward? No. And then our, our, our civil conflict. What we experience has not happened anywhere in the world. You hack the limbs of a baby, you rip open the woman, say you know the sex of the Pekin, put people in house, set her alight. That's the Ceremonian. We have to change that. That will help with. So, my vision says, let me accommodate myself and put aside many things. As I tell you about the time at party office, that's not just one instance. We get for let go. It's time to embrace, to stay together as a nation, as a people. Not only through that to be able to win the development. <laughs> so to those skeptics who say, no, don't, this is good, in order for work, you sure it will work? Yes, it is possible. Accra, Ghana, is, they do well. They are them in the country. Today, today they are far ahead. So it's possible. It is time to believe in ourselves, to realize that transformation is possible if we commit to it, if we set our minds to it, and if we believe that the world is a global village and we can therefore attain success level of other economies. I'm of the view also that no one can know it all, do it all, or do it alone. Therefore, 
with you and my campaign's persistence, with hard work and can-do attitude, we can go to places we never envision. We can go to higher heights that we never imagined. This is our chance. Let's stay together and work. I invite you to join me to deliver on this vision of new hope. Let me close by thanking President Kuruma for providing me the platform upon which I have thrived over the years. Thank you to former cabinet colleagues. Thank you to parliament. Thank you to the bureaucracy and advisors, to analysts and staff, to comrades of the APC, Team 10 and the technical team, and friends and fans for providing me the platform through which I have over the years built my experience and track record on service to our beloved country. And a special recognition goes to my dear wife, Josephine, and our children for their patience and commitment over the years. That is the summary of my vision. There are many more things I could speak to. Give me the platform for three hours. It's a 53-page document. I can go on and on and on. At this juncture, Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, comrades of the APC, I want to give me the opportunity from the back Let them send the youngest person they let come for help me unveil the vision document. And when I unveil and share out Tuna, we will bring copies so that Tuna said we'll get some. Everybody knows we'll get, but some will get. But we will put them online so that people will access them immediately this evening. So now send me one young person there, let can take this book, let all man see Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you for honoring this invitation. I so deeply appreciate it. So, then we'll show you. Come on. Come on, Mendoza. Raise it. Raise it. Raise it. So, it's a 53-page document, our vision of new hope for Sierra Leone, a decisive choice of creating wealth and jobs. It's a bold initiative. Poverty reduction is brilliant. We'll continue doing that, reducing poverty. But I'm saying, let's draw a line in a very bold way, make a commitment to create opportunities that will create jobs as well as wealth for Sierra Leoneans, because we have what it takes to achieve that. This is the document. I invite you to review it. I invite you to take a look at it. It's not wholesome. It's not an end in it itself. It is not complete. You have every opportunity to make your own suggestions that will turn it into a national document. Like I said, no one can know it alone, do it all. We are all human beings, so I invite all to take a look at it. I want to thank you so very much for being here this afternoon and to say this is our document. Join me to implement it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I'll, 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 I'll invite you to please take your seat. We'll pass copies round. Plan a lot, and the party they develop. I mean, this is a foundation for Shosi. The country self they grow in terms of ideas. If we able to realize some of the ideas they would have put, even if not ten percent of them, it will make a huge difference in the nation's development. So I learned a lot, and I'm happy for Shosi. We actually get this vision 
wielding at the fringes of power because pretty soon their vision here will become a reality because APC they can have power. So I'm very happy for be part of the APC na like we then say APC na one word. Then get that single president school for sing any temper, any convention. APC na one word. So when once he's declared the flag bearer, everybody they to the line. It is mandatory. You only have to. I mean otherwise whose option will you get mother be again? You have to to the line. And we do them wholeheartedly, not to like just doing half as hardly because of XYZ. No. We do them unconditional support because that's what the part Mina Karifa Kagba Komo Kabalako in Adubu district. Well, I understand say he can deliver a vision that if you be president, what he hope for happen tomorrow, what he see for the development of Sierra Leonean in the future. Now that I understand. And in the case, Dr. Marate can sector after sector, because as he will for deliver a country to, to prosperity, he will deal with sector after sector. He take the agricultural sector. He tell me how best he will plan the future for improved production. He handle that. He take the women development aspect, how we will promote the women then for income generating. He take the youth, youth sector, how it will be able to give opportunities to youth. He give example to Okada men. We now up to 40,000 youth engaging Okada. In a very near future, then therefore drop off now the Okada trade, either by other mishappening, accident, age, disease, or other things. But what is the plan for them people then they for bring them at the arena for economic development? Then most of them thing then they will in church everybody in the hall as the experience of doctor. Already Dr. Mara himself don't give open hand for welcome everybody for can join them for give vision. You see how he invites a colleague Comrade APC big guns there. We then likewise divide for flag bearership. Big big one there. You see how he invite them all. And he tell them say he, he hopes say then they join them and they will give the opportunity for let he run this country. Likewise so the whole APC, north, east, southwest, Sierra Leone, home and abroad, for join up with this gentleman in vision. For less Sierra Leone a better place. Alaji Malansema Sise, um, Chairman Senga Chimbo Youth Council, and also double as the Deputy Youth Chairman for Nadogo District Youth Council. And of course, we want to commend them because um, posting short um, um, declaration within the past, we can just see that a May artist performance, but what we see now today is different. He educates him. and the day of a high benefit to the um, citizens of this country. In as much as he think about extending invitation to um, people in authorities, because me, me directly um, extend invitation as a chairperson, a tell in a person way, he get respect for structure. So as well to other people in various districts. It is different because the whole well, the whole um, declaration talk about um, in vision, the vision of New Hope. And the New Hope in that document, they talk about how youth will be empowered, how entertainment will be empowered. So it, it, it actually comprises of all works of life. The, 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 the book now is 53 page book, and they tell you, say, it entails the solution for development for this particular country. All right.